Hey, good morning to the Joy Sunday School class. I hope you've had a great week. I certainly have missed being with all of you, but I look so forward to having a few minutes with you today. Um, for those of you who haven't been in the classroom with us before, um, Joy stands for Just Older Youth. Um, so that can range in age from, we have some members in their early 20s to some members who might be a little upwards of 70. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy this as well. It's such a fantastic group of people. Um, today, what I wanted to have a chance to do, and I, again, I can't thank you enough for even taking the time to watch and be a part of this as we're all trying to do something a little bit different in order to get the word out. What an awesome opportunity. Um, and I hope you have a chance to experience some of the awesome teachings that are going to be available to you. Even if you can't do it today, they'll be recorded. You'll have a chance to see things over the next week. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun to, to do that. And it's kind of neat because you can be sitting in North Carolina and, you know, have a church experience from South Dakota. Um, just what a blessing it really has been. And thank you again for engaging in this. Um, before we get started in our Sunday school class, one of the things that we always do is we open with prayer. And so since I'm sitting here with this phone propped up against a candle and stacked on three books, um, we're still going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll get started. And I look forward to it. So if you'll bow your heads, please. Father, at this time, we just thank you so much for this time, Lord. We thank you for this gift of this day. Father, we know that those there are those out there who are struggling, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that as they come to know you better, Lord, that you will just give them that peace, Lord, that peace that passes all understanding. Father, it is a unique time in our history, Father, but you knew that this would happen before we were ever born. Father, thank you so much for being who you are, Father, and we just look to you for guidance and wisdom, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so for those of you who are on the front lines of this battle, we want to take a minute and just thank you so much for your time, doctors, nurses, um, people who are uh, researchers, government officials, um, first responders, your faithfulness is so incredibly appreciated at this time because you're, you're giving of yourself so that the rest of us might be able to have some sense of peace. Officials, I can't imagine the pressures that you're under right now, and I pray that God will guard your heart and minds as we move forward through this time. But let me assure you that this is not forever. Um, you know, some people refer to it as our new normal. I'm not sure that that's the case. Um, I think we are going to do things differently maybe from here on out, but I don't know that it's going to necessarily be our new normal. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Um, so I have a question for you as you're watching this no right now, though. Are you letting what's happening right now define you or are you letting it refine you? And I think that's something that we really, really need to think about. In the book that our class had been studying, I shared with you last week, it was written by James McDonald, and it was called Lord Change My Attitude. We were on the last couple of chapters, and basically we discussed a little bit of rebellion, which was considered an attitude of wilderness. Um, and you can imagine a, will, uh, a rebellious attitude is one wherein you kind of just drive the bus, for lack of better words. You're relying so wholly and solely on you. And the better attitude, the attitude that we want to replace the rebellion with, is submission. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And it's going to sound like a really strange thing to talk about. Um, but a lot of us, as we sit in our homes, as we stay, as we shelter in place, um, we are under submission. And how do we handle that? How, what's, what does God have to say about submission? Well, I want to assure you, God has a lot to say about it. Um, what, what I did do today, which is kind of funny to me is as I've been working on this lesson throughout the week, different little things have come to pass and I've been wor working like everybody else doing things differently in my home. So we've started planning some things and I have a visual aid for you. So I'm hoping I can flip this camera around. And if you knew me, you would know that as according to my husband, I'm the Dr. Kevorkian of the plant world. So the mere fact that anything can grow under my watch is phenomenal to say the least. Um, I'm going to try to flip these around. I'm going to introduce you to my new friends because, see, we are locked up in the house and we are limited on our friends. And some celeries. So you see what's happening here. My son named the largest one Steve. I'm not exactly sure why. And then we have Cash and Johnny and Ethel, but none of that really matters. Um, but that being said, 
they all start from something that got cut off. You see that? But then there's all this new growth. Something changed with that lettuce. That lettuce hadn't planned on that. And we came along and we cut that celery off. And then we stuck it in water. And that's the magic part. It's the water. So we stuck it in the water, and lo and behold, these things have started to grow. Now, my husband's been a little bit nervous about leaving cups around the kitchen lately because everything's got something green sticking out of it. But I want you to think about that visual image for a minute because that's what God's doing right now. God's taking each and every one of us, and he's trimming something back. He may be taking something away that you're used to doing. He may be taking your normal schedule away. He's changing things up. He wants you to look at things differently. He's wanting you to see, though, that there's no hope lost in that, that he's doing a new thing. Um, I want to take you to a couple of verses um, you know, that are, that are going to explain this maybe a little bit more clearly, but, but to be under submission is to put others before yourself, to come under authority to recognize that there's authority over you. Um, if we go to John 3, 31, again, this is a Sunday school class, but if you have your Bible, I encourage you to turn there. So John 3, 31, I've got it marked, um, says, the one who comes from above, he is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what has See, he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Think about that for a minute. He's the one who's above all. Everything come, comes under submission to God. The, the reality is you have to be able to... Oh, it says no sound. I don't know what that means. Um, you have to be able to... Let me see if that helps. Oh, I don't think I have volume. You have to be willing and able to come under submission to God. And that's not necessarily an easy thing to do, to die to self. Um, as Caroline Stetson used to always say, to take up your cross daily and walk. Um, oh, when I showed this, the plants, the sound went out. Oh, I'll, get, I'll show you my plants again. It's probably a good thing the sound went out because I introduced you by name. <laughs> um, anyway back to what we're talking about submitting to god is replacing that rebellious attitude and being willing to submit if you are looking for peace in this very very disturbing time in this very unusual time in this time in history like there's never been before if you are looking for peace there is only one who can grant you peace but you have to be willing to come under submission to him um we'll go to philippians 4 let's see here so if you're, if you're with me, get your Bible. We're going to Philippians here. We're going to Philippians 4 and 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understandings, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. But the way to do that is to make sure that you have that relationship. You have to have that relationship with Jesus Christ to experience that peace, and I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to pray and just tell the Lord that you are so looking forward to Him being your Savior and that He is He is what you need, and He will come into your heart and He will give you peace like you have never, ever known, no matter what the storm may be. Isaiah 40 and 31, so now we're going to jump to the Old Testament, tells us, that those who wait on the Lord, and many of you will know these verses, um, but I think it's important that we stand on them. Isaiah 4 and 31. But those who, in my translation, hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And isn't that what we need to do right now? We need to rise up. We need to be strong. We need to do what God has called us to do. And, and submit to what the authorities have told us to do. And it's not easy. But we do this because God is a great protector. And that's why he wants you to follow his rules. And that's why he wants you to come under submission to him. Because he has a better plan for you. Just like with the plants. And I'm going to flip it around and show it to you again. You're going to see that he's making something new. And he's making something beautiful. Um, so full submission to God will give you peace. 
Um, and submission to God also offers you protection. If you look, take a look at Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. So let's hop to Psalms. Psalms 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. He is your refuge and your strength. For those of you, like the rest of us who might have chickens, um, sometimes if you'll see that mama hen and those little babies get tucked up under her wings, it's kind of like that. God is your refuge and that's where you go. Um, I have one more scripture that I wanted to discuss with you, Isaiah 41 and 10. So we're going to go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dis be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And you can read on to that a little bit more if you'd like. But, but basically, over and over again, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, God is telling us over and over again, Hey, I'm here. I am your strength. I am your refuge. Come to me. This is a very anxious time for a lot of people. Um, different people handle things differently. For some who feel confined to their homes, maybe there's a sense of loneliness and depression. And there's, there's so much more there. It's hard, to, um, it's hard to articulate sometimes how it must feel for those people in those situations. We are fortunate where I am. We can get outside in our yards. But for those who don't have that option... Um, you know, I just want to make sure that, that they know that he is an ever-present help. And to sit down and to study and to renew your mind over and over again. And to come under his submission because he will give you peace. And he's going to give you a job to do. And you're going to be, who knows, you might be a helper. Um, but let me flip this around again because I want you to see this little visual one more time. <laughs> so you'll get an idea that no matter what God does... He is going to bring something beautiful out of it. And I so look forward to what is coming. Um, so let me flip these around again and introduce you. Since there was no sound, um, I'm going to introduce you to Johnny and Cash and Ethel, um, our little romaine and celery plants that we had cut off. Um, and now we have something new that's grown in its place. So even though the knife came against that romaine and cut it. Uh, oh, and Steve. I'm sorry, I forgot Steve. Steve's the tall one. Um, anyway, even though something had come against them, look, in a little bit of water, and maybe even living water, we'll use that. There's something beautiful. So that's your visual for today. I know it sounds so incredibly silly, but I want to encourage you, and I want to encourage you, each and every one, to stay in the Word, to continue to read, to continue to study, and to understand that even though sometimes that free will of man, that natural spirit wants to step up and, and get haughty, and um, kind of go against the things that we're having to deal with. We're much better to come under submission because God is protecting us. God is going to give us peace. And we are going to get through this. And you're not alone doing it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being a part of the Joy Sunday School class. Um, if there's anything that we can do for you, please feel free to message us through this Facebook. Um, it's just a joy to be here. Thank you again for watching. And I hope you all have a blessed week. Talk to you soon.